itself conjures up images of mystery. Have they always been with us? Have they never been with us? Their work is timeless, an enigmatic reflection of our darkest fears and deepest passions. In this program, we will attempt to unravel a bit of the mystery, the fact, and the fiction behind the legend known to the world as Barnes. And Barnes. My name is Jose Ferrer and I'm here to pay tribute to the supreme artistry of Art and Artie Barnes. I remember as if it was yesterday, I was a mere infant, virtually in swaddling clothes in London with my father and mother. And uh, the rage of the West End at the time, the West End was the theatrical uh, section of London, was Art and Artie Barnes in one of Shakespeare's great plays. Father and mother, three of us, I, we packed up and went to Shaftesbury Avenue and sat in the stalls and it was at that moment that I surrendered. When I saw Art and Artie Barnes, I surrendered my lifelong dream of becoming a great architect and decided to devote myself to worshiping at the Temple of Thespis. I'm, I'm Jerry Siegel. Uh, I once had a, an idea for a wonderful comic strip called The Schmuck, but Barnes and Barnes, those bastards, held a gun against my head and made me create Superman. Don't ever get them mad at you, because if you get them mad, uh, they get real crazy. Uh, like this one time, I couldn't figure out if they were going to kill me or not. Uh, but I don't think that they would kill anybody. But at one time, I thought they were trying to kill me. I didn't think they were trying to kill me, but I thought they knew who was trying to kill me. And uh, I ran away for months at a time. But basically, Barnes and Barnes wouldn't hurt a fly. But don't ever get them mad at you.
heads, fish heads, eat them up, yum. Fish heads, fish heads, roly poly fish heads, fish heads, fish heads, eat them up, yum. In the morning, laughing happy fish heads. In the evening, floating in the soup. Fish heads. of Barnes and Barnes. But I think their greatest hour just has to be their acoustic set at Woodstock. I'd like to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that Art and Artie Barnes play lead trumpet and high note trumpet with my band in 1942. But I had to let them go because they were too difficult to handle. I'm sorry.
Barnes and Barnes since I was a little girl. They used to shave my uncle. <laughs> I, I'm very uncomfortable talking about this. I, I I agree to this interview, but I've never I've never discussed my personal relationship with Barnes and Barnes, and I I feel that well, hell, if it's going to come out, it's going to come out. I kept them locked up in my closet for 11 years. All right, it, now everybody knows. It was not something I intended to do. I, I thought they'd stay for a week or two, but. Well, my wife just loved playing with them, and, and my kids, they were a lot of fun, all right? They were a lot of fun. And if I, if I took them away from the world a little bit longer than they should have been, well, so be it. Now, now it's out. But I've let them go. They're, they're free. And, uh, oh, God, I, no, no. remember who I met first, whether it was Barnes or, or Barnes. I know I was up for a play based on uh, Barnes's novel. She squealed and ran away. I didn't get the part, but it was an exciting time. You know, it was, we were all young, just starting out. And separately, these guys were amazing. They were uh, <laughs> quite something to behold, but together. Ah, 
it blew everybody out of the water. I, I felt like uh, I should get out of the business now. I mean, what's left for me? It, it was like you were in the presence of greatness, and it, it just, they reeked of it. They, they just, they, they reeked of it. And uh, I had to get away, uh, you know, get back to basics, and basically put them completely out of my mind, or, or I never would have attempted a, a career in this business. They're, they're, it's spooky. They're almost too good. I think Barnes and Barnes are better than Frank Shep. <laughs> Hi. I live with Art and Artie, and, or at least I used to live with them, and they taught me how to have sex, and now I'm going to have their baby. Do you think we'll ever truly understand love? Perhaps. Barnes and Barnes. Yeah, I remember my dad telling me about Barnes and Barnes and some of the missions they flew during World War II. When I was just a kid growing up, I used to collect all their trading cards. I used to dream that someday I might meet them personally and maybe even work with them. And then one day, it came true. Definitely the high point of my life. They're too good. Bring 
some beer and bring some cheese, oh yeah. Bite and tease and squeeze me, please, oh yeah. We will soon be on our knees, oh yeah. Don't be up in the air when traveling by plane. say a few words. I've been asked also to mention the names quite frequently. Barnes and Barnes. I wonder what they do. As I recall, it was, um, what, early 70s, 1970, late 69. We were on this road out in the country, been to the pub, and uh, we broke down. And there we were, stuck out here. It's kind of moors. It was real, really kind of creepy. Straight out of Sherlock Holmes. Didn't have a, a jack. What was it? An MG 1100 or something. What are we going to do? And they don't have lights on those country roads and everything. And there they come, down the road, Art and Artie Barnes. Our first real contact with these two guys. I don't know where they come from. Who are those guys? But we um, they fixed the car in no time at all, and they were gone. The last thing I remember saying was something about going down the Ventura Highway after some horse or something. Like horse, the horse with no name. Yeah. And of course, that was what inspired the... Uh, the early works of ours, and um, to this day, they still are a great influence. I mean, who can beat this stuff, huh? Fish heads, fish heads, roly poly fish heads, fish heads, fish heads, eat them up, yum. Classic stuff, huh, dear? Yeah, too good. Don't write them like that anymore. Too good. Fish heads. Fish head, roly poly fish head. Eat them up, yum! Eat them up, yum! Eat them up, yum! Eat them up, yum! Eat them up, yum. <laughs> I took a fish head out to see a movie, and we didn't have any fun. Fish heads, fish heads, roly poly fish heads. Eat them up, <laughs> yum! Okay. <laughs> Oh, I miss 
That would sound too much like Mer Merrill Lynch, Pierce Finner, and Smith, and uh, so. We, but you know, complicated besides, they got, they, yeah, and, and they got another job, and then Neil quit the band to work on his car. I first heard about Barnes and Barnes from Bing Crosby. Barnes and Barnes were really a part of the Rhythm Boys when Bing started with Paul Whiteman, and so he knew them very well. They were later replaced because. Well, actually, they were really outshining Bing's voice, so they had to be replaced after all. Uh, now, later on, our friendship continued because they were originally cast for White Christmas. Irving Berlin wanted them more than anybody else. When they left the project because of artistic differences with Mr. Berlin, after all, they wanted, well, actually, they had better songs than Mr. Berlin, so. They were going to put some of those in, and it just it didn't work out because he owned the property, White Christmas. So, anyway, uh, they they really pre-recorded a lot of Bing's work in White Christmas, and they used that. Nobody knows that, of course. I wouldn't like for it to get around. Here's a new song that Barnes and Barnes wrote, and it's called "It's a Hard Business," and I sang it with uh, Rosemary Clooney, who's very talented. It's a hard business. Please tell me that you agree. It's a hard business. It's hard for you and hard for me. It's a hard business reaching way down in your soul. It's a hard business singing jazz or rock and roll. That's just a little bit of that song. Uh, in the future, I plan to be one of the biggest entertainers in the whole world. And if it wasn't for Art Barnes, I'd probably still be in my room uh, without no plans about being the biggest singer in the whole world.
So, once more I dot my weather-beaten cap to the eternal glory and artistry, the supreme artistry of Art and Artie Barnes. And to those of you who are listening to the sound of my voice at this moment, I leave you with one question. Just think about this. What would the theater be today without Art and Artie Barnes? Hmm? Did you ever think about that? Did that ever occur to you? Pause and think. What would the theater be today without Art and Artie Barnes? Quite a question, isn't it? Thank you very much.